to real economy. In this episode, we will look into the grain of Europe, a demographic phenomenon which sees a decrease in both fertility and mortality rates and a higher life expectancy among European populations. This transformation can have a significant impact on all aspects of society and the economy. So later we visit Cyprus to see how the EU is trying to integrate older people into the labour market and we interview the Nobel winning prize economist Christopher Pisaridis. But first, a quick crash course to get you up to speed on the issue. Europe's population is getting older. Between now and 2030, most EU countries will see the number of workers over 50 increase to 55% of their overall labour force. The European Commission forecasts that the spending on healthcare for older people and pensions will rise 2.3 percentage points by 2040. The demographic challenges vary across the EU. Portugal, Greece, Italy and Spain are among the top 10 countries in the world with the lowest fertility rate. Uncertainty over poor job prospects, low wage expectations and inflexible labour markets are leading women to have fewer children and to have them later in life. However, getting over 50s into good work has a positive impact on the economy and can create new markets or expand the so-called silver economy. Spending by people aged over 50 will reach 6.4 trillion by 2025 and be responsible for nearly 40% of jobs created. The European Social Fund is the main instrument for helping people get better jobs and ensuring fair opportunities. The Deputy Director General of the EU Commission, Adriana Sokova, explains. Now I think that uh, we live in a situation where we have a lot of challenges linked to the technological development and the population ageing both in general and also the workforce. So we need to act. We need to use the funds uh, for helping people reskill and upskill their capacities. We need to help them find uh, and face new job opportunities, but also uh, be ready for new working relations. Okay, Mrs. Sukova, many thanks for being with us. Let's hand over to Fanny Goret, who visited Cyprus and met different older people who are trying to join again the labour market. After the financial crisis of 2012, Cyprus has regained a positive growth. However, many workers remain unemployed, especially those over 50 years old. The European Social Fund finances projects that aim to integrate and maintain older workers into the labour market. For instance, the programme Aid Scheme encourages Cypriot employers to hire full-time people over 50 years old by covering part of their salary. Here in Nicosia, Paolo took up the scheme. Paolo was working for an airline when a social plan forced him to quit at the age of 60. Since then, he found a new stable job in a transport company that he was able to keep. In my case, the employer was offered the scheme by the government, and uh, that's how I continued working for the company. After my old company stopped, a lot of my colleagues had a very big difficulty in finding a job. So this scheme uh, was helpful for persons like uh, these. Over the last three years, aid scheme helped over a thousand people over 50 years old to find a job. But this was not the case for Eleanor, who was an accountant for 26 years. She decided to start her own business due to a lack of opportunities. It is more difficult to look for a job if you are not over 50, maybe over 40. Because they know you have experience, they cannot find the experience as an excuse for less salary. So they prefer to find younger people. Making a better place for older workers, this is a growing challenge for Europe. The median age of the EU should rise up by almost four years to reach nearly 47 years old in 2050. It could rise up by eight years in Cyprus, but also in Malta, Poland and Slovakia. People over 50 are not the target group approached by the majority of employers. Workers are not able to change their main uh, skills. Uh, this is why we give emphasis in training and retraining in order to make those people able to re-enter the, the labour market. Next stop is the London School of Economics. We met the Nobel Prize-winning economist Christopher Pissarides to discuss the impact of a new demographic reality on economy and how this divergence between the South and North can be bridged. The demographic imbalance is not the cause of that. It's more of an outcome of, of 
more fundamental underlying forces that give rise to this divergence in development in attitudes towards life generally that we have in Europe and in what we see in, in the statistics now. Uh, for example, if you look at the various studies that were done on how ready European countries are to take on the new technology, there's a huge gap between the North and the South. You, know, you have the Scandinavians and Germany be more than prepared to take on in any kind of new technology that we have. They're doing an awful lot of R&D, they've provided the infrastructure. And you look at the South, and maybe in one or two things, they're there, more likely is that they haven't done anything yet. Well, that's telling you what's going to happen over the next 10 to 20 years. Diversion is going to increase by more. But how could this affect really uh, practically uh, the public finances? There's no doubt that health as a sector of the economy will attract more spending and will attract more employment. So we have to be very careful how we plan it in relation to the private sector and the public sector. The pension system is, is entirely dependent on policies. In the past, pensions in many countries were planned without a view to what's going to happen in the future, forgetting that when someone enters the labor force and is signed up to a pension scheme, then that will be in operation for the next 40 years. So we have to rethink on how we treat work beyond retirement age, which is sometime in the 60s for practically all countries, and how we do it conditional on the healthy age expectancy. How do you imagine or forecast uh, the, the picture of Europe in terms of uh, working force and in terms of nature of, of jobs and uh, situation, you know, how it's going to be? We need to be very careful about technology and make sure that we have the infra infrastructure for the application of digital technologies uh, throughout Europe not leave it entirely in, in national hands because we know that if you leave it there, then some countries, and especially those who are more advanced currently, will shoot up even more. We need to reform our pension systems and um, change them to funded pensions at the very uh, least. We need to take care of the overcrowding of our cities, of our environment, of congestion. And we need to act together on developments that could break up the uh, unity and the cohesion of the European Union. I mentioned technology is one, but we didn't mention immigration. Immigration is a huge issue that we are now just stripping under the carpet because we don't know what to do basically about it. But sooner or later, we're going to face the music. Mr. Pisaridis, many thanks for your time and of course this uh, interesting input to real economy. Thank you. Thank you. 